Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and still going strong with the Halloween creations. So for today, these projects I'm showing you guys, they could you could make this into a card if you wanted, but I just got this idea brewing in the back of my mind for the last couple of weeks about creating a repositionable scene. So what I did was I took, um, I've got a couple of pieces of Distress Watercolor cardstock, the pre-cut pieces that are four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have them textured side up just because I like the look of the texture when you sponge and everything, it just gives it that extra something. And I have it over my um, nonstick craft sheet and I'm sponging on different colors of Distress Ink. So for the first one, I used um, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, and Wilted Violet. And I super sped this up just because otherwise it'd just be boring watching me sponge all these. Um, but yeah, sponge the colors on, kind of blend them together a little bit. Didn't worry too much about getting a perfect blend because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and then I sprayed it with my Distress Sprayer, let it sit for about 30 seconds, picked up with the paper towel, dried that off with my heat tool quickly, did it a second time just to get that extra splattery fun effect. And then I set that aside and then on my second piece, I used a different color combo. I used mustard seed, carved pumpkin and picked raspberry. And I also applied them differently rather than doing like two sections like I did in the first one. I just did one kind of kind of looking like a sunset. Um, just again, to kind of mix things up a bit and then did the exact same thing. Spritz it with my distress sprayer, let it sit for a bit so it would react with the water. Picked it up with my paper towel, dried it and then did it a second time to get even more splatters. So once I was done with all of that, I pulled out my Big Shot and some black cardstock and I'm running through the Leafy Tree Backdrop dies. These are also from, these are from Lawn Fawn. I have both of them. I have the portrait and the landscape. I showed these in a haul video not too long ago. I was so excited to get these. <laughs> and this was one of the first things that was in the back of my mind when I was looking at them. So these are sized, the same size as an A2 card. So they would cover an entire card front, FYI. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half. So I ran these through each with the black cardstock. And then I'm running through again with those um, backgrounds. Technically a person could just adhere the black cardstock over top. However, I do plan on laminating these and I wanted them to be as flat as possible because that way the laminate is just smooth right across, you know, because if you've got like heights of cardstock and that sort of thing, laminate doesn't stick as well. So um, I die cut both of the backgrounds with each of these dies. So got everything die cut and made sure not to lose any of the interior pieces because that's what I want. So once I'm done my die cutting, I just took some copy paper. Anything would work. A person could use cardstock. I just used copy paper because I could and it was there. And I cut it to just slightly smaller than um, the four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm applying adhesive to the back of my first die cut. I'm just using Tombow Mono Multi. So I applied the adhesive and then I'm going to back it with this copy paper. So once I've got the copy paper in place, I can flip this back over and using more of my Tombow Mono Multi, I can start adhering all these interior pieces from the cardstock or watercolor paper that I had spun with all of the distress inks. So now I've got this scene with the black tree kind of silhouetted in the frame and this fun sponged background. So I was left over obviously with these frames of the trees sponged and I couldn't throw them away. So I just set them aside. I'm gonna find another project down the road or a person could actually use these and then take all the black interior pieces and end up making four instead of two. Like whatever works, it totally would. So I've got both of my pieces here with their um, sponges and I just set those aside for now. And now I'm going to create all my little repositionable characters. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Booyah stamp set that I've been raving about forever and still hadn't used. So that was another reason why I went with this project because I was like, ooh, I can use all of the images at once. <laughs> so I'd already cut out, so there were some dies that were nested inside some of the larger dies. So I already removed those ones. There was five small dies and I have those set aside for the moment. And all the rest of the dies I just kept attached because it's more convenient. So I lined up all of the stamps with that coordinating die set there. I've done other videos on this showing how to do this with the Misty and I have the mini Misty here. So I had all the stamps lined up with the connected dies and then I just used all those other little images that also have dies. I just sprinkled those along the outside of it. And I am inking up the stamps with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and stamping this onto Bristol Smooth cardstock and stamped that once and stamped it a second time. So I have double the images. I could have done this multiple times and moved a couple of those small little stamps that are 
freestanding, I guess you'd call it, <laughs> so that they'd fit on this piece of cardstock and did the exact same thing, inked it up with the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and then stamped it onto the Bristol Smooth. And I chose Bristol Smooth for this because I plan on coloring these with my clean color real brush markers. And I don't like using the clean color markers with the Distress watercolor paper. I do not get good results with it. Um, I just find they don't, the color doesn't move very well in my opinion. So I chose Bristol Smooth for this so that I could get um, the coloring the way I wanted it. And then as a final little step, of course, I grabbed some of the little faces that come in this stamp set. For a second, I was like, these ghosts look really boring. Then I remember that there's faces included. So stamped several of the little faces. And then, like I said, I used my clean color real brush markers to color in all these little guys. Um, really simple coloring. The ghosts especially. I just used some light gray around the edges. And then I'm just using my little water brush to pull the color out and blend it just a little bit. Nothing too fancy. I'm not doing much blending of colors or anything. I just wanted to get them all colored in. So I did all the ghosts with a little bit of gray and then so many of these images are technically black. So it was super quick and simple. I didn't have to use a whole lot of markers. But basically with all of them, all I did was color along, like apply color along the edges of all these images and then use my water brush to pull the color more into the center. Simple, quick, Easy. I was able to do all these images in not very long um, or not a very long amount of time. I can't talk today, but um, yeah, I left the little um, hair piece. I could have done it in black because, you know, technically it's supposed to be, but I wanted to add some color to these images. So I did this one in purple. So pulled in some purple just to make these a little bit more fun. Obviously, you can color any color you want, but yeah kept the colors fairly simple anyway since I did such bright colors for the background but did purple for that hair and then the band on the witch's hat and then I went in and did um, some bright pink for the center of the ears for these little um, outfits as well as there's a little flower a little bit of orange for the little um, treat bag and that sort of thing yeah easy easy coloring nothing too fancy and then the nice thing with this is I could have done even more if I'd wanted to, but you'll see at the end, this is enough. But down the road, if I wanted to do more, if the kids end up wrecking them or losing them or whatever, I totally could. But once all the coloring was done, this is where the idea came into place. So I've got my little Zyra and Creative Station light and I have the double-sided laminate cartridge in here. And I'm running both these backgrounds through the machine so that they are getting laminated. Super quick, super simple. Get them both laminated here to protect these and then also to give it this slick surface. So once they're both laminated, I'm going to trim off that excess there. And then I just used my dotting tool around the very edges of the cardstock just to make sure that laminate is sealed completely. Kind of a redundant step with the laminate, but I just did it anyway, just in case. And then I just used my scissors to trim off the excess around on these backgrounds leaving a tiny little bit of a border just so that it's completely sealed but again it wouldn't really matter too much but trimmed off all of that excess so I've got now both of my backgrounds completely laminated like I said these could still have been made into cards if a person wanted to like you could attach this to a card you know whatever floats your boat or which I mentioned in a minute um, you could use the cartridge that it laminates one side and uses permanent adhesive on the other so you could have laminated this and then adhered it to a card front. That would have worked, but I don't have that cartridge. So I had to make do and that's what I did here. So I ran these colored images through the laminate because I don't have the laminate and permanent adhesive. So I ran it through the laminate and then I'm going to actually peel off the back piece of laminate. So only the front is laminated. This is because you cannot apply any adhesive or anything to the back of this. It won't stick to the laminate. I tried, trust me. <laughs> So um, since I didn't have that cartridge, I ran these through the laminate, like I said, and then I'm peeling off the back piece. And I don't know if this would work with all types of cardstock again, but because I used the Bristol Smooth, this was just dumb luck here. It's not like I thought this through. Um, the back piece of laminate just peeled off cleanly, like no problem whatsoever. Maybe if a person had used regular cardstock or watercolor paper or anything like that, it might not have peeled off so easily, but the Bristol Smooth has such a smooth texture to it. It just peeled off, which was perfect. So I was able to peel off the back. So I've got the laminate on the front and then I ran this through the machine this time with the semi-permanent uh, cartridge. So I popped out the laminate cartridge and then popped in the semi-permanent semi adhesive cartridge 
just like that. The repositionable adhesive, I guess is what it's called. So pop that into place and then I can run both of these through again with that. So it's got laminate on one side and repositionable adhesive on the other. So press that down really, really well with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess so that I don't have um, all this hanging around here. So got rid of that and then peeled off the backing sheet because that's completely irrelevant as well because the adhesive is all on the very back of all of this. And now I can run this through my big shot with the dies that I already lined up. This was also why I took the time to line up the stamps with the dies. Otherwise I'd be sitting here forever lining up all of these dies with all these little images. This saved me a ton of time. So line them up and then I just used some micropore tape to hold these dies into place and then ran this through my machine and did this twice with both pieces. So everything is die cut, laminated on the front, and repositionable adhesive on the back like stickers. So now I've got all these fun little elements that my kids can play with and create these fun little go scenes. They can dress them up and move them around. And I just think this is so fun. I was actually sitting and playing with this while I was like doing this, peeling off all the backing here. Like really, really fun. So all the extra pieces will stick to the back of these scenes so the kids can just set them aside, use them later, create their little scenes, do whatever they want. So you could obviously do these with any images you have, but I just thought this for Halloween with these little ghosts and the costumes is beyond adorable. So I made enough for both my middle kids to play with and just have a blast with them. And they have little tiny finicky things like this. So yeah, all their fun little characters, so much fun and because it has the repositional adhesive you can keep picking them up and moving them around constantly i still assume the permanent adhesive would work just as well because like i said nothing really sticks to laminate i don't know someone would have to try it out and tell me because i don't have that cartridge so i can't try it out for myself and i didn't even think until after this was done of running it through my machine with the permanent adhesive instead of the repositionable so yeah someone else try it out let me know i don't have a time now to go back and kind of redo all this but it was super super fun so I hope you guys enjoyed this fun little project I can't wait to give these to my kids I think they're going to enjoy it it's so fun so as always I will have links below the video to everything the Xyron the stamps the dies all that fun stuff so all of that will be linked below as well as on my blog post the pictures all that stuff I'll have links to other videos here at the end thank you all so much for watching subscribing thumbs up and commenting on my videos I really appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next one bye